Enjoy all episodes of the RCWR Show on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Catch the RCWR Show with Lee Sanders every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, only on Spreaker.com. Covering all things WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, Global Force Wrestling, Paragon Pro Wrestling, any and all things wrestling and beyond, as well as an occasional appearance by some kick-ass awesome guests. 10 p.m. Eastern, only on Spreaker.com. Hey, if you can't catch our shows live, you can scoop it up on demand on great platforms such as Spreaker, iTunes, Mixler, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and on YouTube. Just use the keywords... The RCWR Show. Warning, the RCWR Show with Lee Sanders is intended for a mature audience only. The following is an Infinity One Productions presentation, keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive. Covering the latest in wrestling and beyond since 2011. You're listening to the RCWR Show. Now, your host, live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., as featured on WrestleMate.com and TNA Insider, Lee Sanders. God damn, what a night, what a night, what a Sunday night it was. Lee Sanders here coming at you for this Sunday night of January 24th. 2016 all new rcwr post show as we are talking the 29th annual wwe royal rumble pay-per-view event fallout i want to hear from you guys that had saw the event as i'm going to be live for the next little bit live only exclusively on Spreaker.com. I know there's probably going to be a lot of you guys that's going to be looking for this on YouTube. I promise after the show is over, this will automatically be uploaded to YouTube. So special shout out to our YouTube subscribers on there. Uh, as I definitely want to hear from our YouTube audience, I want to know from those of you that maybe were at the Orlando pay-per-view event in person, you got to see all the action. I want to hear from you. If you saw the pay-per-view, I want to know what you thought about it, your brutally honest opinion, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So come one, come all, gather around, Twitter, at the RCWR Show, Facebook, Infinity One Productions. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. You know, I I gotta say, not to toot my own horn a little bit, because this isn't one of those... I'm not rubbing it in anybody's face. But anybody that had checked out the Tuesday night edition of the RCWR show earlier this week, did I call it or did I call it? Now, if you listen to the show, there was one match I messed up, but when it counted the most, I got everything else on point. Let me tell you. All right, I got to finish putting out these links because I got to make sure everybody's going to be tuning in, checking this out. But man, those of you that follow me all throughout social media, make sure you... If you see the links for the show, you share, you retweet it, all that good stuff really helps out. I actually see somebody had did a little bit of a, a refavorite. Let's let's see if we can get that going. I'll tweet all that out there. Yeah, so I, I got to say, uh, as I'm putting all these links out, I checked out the Royal Rumble event for the very first time. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I checked out the Royal Rumble event for the very first time via my brand new xbox one game console and i I gotta tell you since i've been playing around with it i've been checking out a lot of content on the wwe network i haven't had any type of lagging issues whatsoever i was actually watching tonight's pay-per-view event with my girl and i said to her i said i don't know about you but i'm not noticing any type of problem so far with the wwe network have you and she's like no no not since you've been playing around with it and we both were kind of like well the real key is going to be to see how it is when there's a wwe live event uh, which came tonight and i don't know about you guys but i had no lagging issues whatsoever i'm trying to wwe royal rumble well hang on guys i'm trying to put this daggone tweet out rumble fallout there we go. Listen. 
via Spreaker at... Okay, guys, sorry about that. But, yeah, I didn't see any type of lagging issues whatsoever, and I, I just... It was awesome. It was an awesome experience. Plays three times more smoother that I'm experiencing versus the Xbox 360 game console. So a little bit of a challenge out there to those of you that have both the Xbox and the uh, X- Xbox One and the Xbox 360. I'd love to know if you guys are kind of noticing uh, the same thing here. I uh, saw the pre-show. Pre-show was pretty good. Now, with regards to the pre-show, there was one match that might have been interesting for some of you all to check out because it had involved a returning Damian Sandow. Yes, I know. We haven't like seen any type of video packages, no prior matches on WWE programming, nothing for Damian Sandow. He just pops up out the clear blue. He's involved in a pre-show match, and there was some pretty interesting stakes on the line. As get this, he was involved in a fatal four-way tag team match to qualify for the Royal Rumble match. So what does that mean? That basically meant that the winning tag team involved in this fatal four-way got to go to the Royal Rumble. So it was Mark Henry and Jack Swagger who actually ended up winning the whole thing. They defeated the team of Derry Young, Damian Sandow, and the Dudley Boys, and the Ascension. Yes, yes, Damian Sandow made his return. Did not even advance. I I know some of you guys are hearing that and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lee. Mark Henry and Jack Swagger advanced? They took up two precious spots in the Royal Rumble? Yes, believe it or not. I I couldn't really like wrap my brain around that when that had went down because part of me is kind of going, look, look, we can all be in agreement. Darren Young has a fantastic look. He's got a nice look about him, but... That connection with the audience and all that, it's obvious every single time we see him maybe pair up with other people, it's pretty obvious who's like the weak link and all that. And I'm not saying all this just to be hating on the man or anything, because I'm not a hater. I'm not. I'm just giving my honest take on how I feel about him in the company so far and it's been a little bit of a disappointment now some of you may disagree with me on that it's okay to disagree it's just a matter of a pig it love to have a great healthy debate about you but in my eyes from here at least tonight as far as it goes with Darren Young I honestly I, I, I could have done without seeing him be involved in such a match that had such a great interesting stipulation to it Dudley Boys, I could actually understand why the Dudley Boys were not involved in the Royal Rumble. I think that all pretty much goes back to when Bubba Ray had made his return. He made his return via the Royal Rumble and all that. So I could kind of understand why the Dudley Boys weren't really involved. Because that was last year after all, wasn't it, guys? So I could pretty much understand where they were going with that. The Ascension... I got to like mention a sign that I had saw in the crowd tonight as the Royal Rebel event had came to us from Orlando, Florida. Love Orlando, Florida. Did anybody else, now that I put into this out there, did anybody else notice the fan that had the sign that said something along the lines of rebrain the ascension or repush the ascension? Something like that. It was like a white sign and he had... Victor and Connor's face. He drew it pretty damn well. It was a really nice little cool sign. I was like, huh, that's pretty badass. Ascension, they are nowhere. Look, when they were in NXT, yes, they were smelling like a nice, good smelling pot of fucking chili. But then, you know what happens with good chili, right, guys? You have that good chili, you put it out on the counter for a couple of days. It's all hard and crusty. It kind of loses its flavor and all that. And then next thing you know, you're ready to move on. Or you know what? It's like a nice box of Velveeta shells, mac and cheese. You chop up the hot dogs in it. You take a couple of slices of Sorgeno medium or sharp cheddar cheese. You mix it up really good. You throw your black pepper in there. 
Mm, it tastes so good. You are in heaven. But try eating that same dish for three consecutive weeks, three times a day. Unless you figure out ways to flavor it up, dress it up, to make it even more interesting than the last time you ate it. It gets a bit played out. Eventually, you burn out from eating it. I just can't help but kind of look at the Ascension like that. They were very promising on the NXT roster, and then when they came on up to the main WWE roster, they just fell so short. They got seriously lost in the shuffle. I don't know what to make of that. But yeah, the Silverback and the Real American had advanced in that pre-show match. Looks like, I don't know if it was maybe for one night only. I need to rely on you guys via social media to let me know what was going on. But apparently, Renee Young, Booker T, Corey Graves, they were joined by someone new to their commentating team. I don't know if he's going to be helping them out on the Raw pre-show and the pay-per-view events or if he's just going to be helping out during the pay-per-view events. But we had saw Jerry the King Lawler. I thought that was interesting, but my God, I like, look, I grew up on wrestling. I remember wrestling as a kid growing up. I remember it like as far back as the early 80s and all that great fond memories, kicking back, watching it with my grandmother and my uncle and my dad. And then when I got a little bit older, I even went further back and was focusing on wrestling from the 70s and all that. So I've always had a great appreciation for wrestling of yesteryear. But, you know, for me personally, I just could like, I don't care about Jerry Lawler. Everybody's making a big deal about Jerry Lawler going back the heel route and all of this other stuff. It's like, Honestly, at the stage in this man's life right now, I have this joke. It irritates the hell out of my girl. But I have this joke where I basically say, ah, it's time for you to go sit in your recliner and have a warm glass of milk and a sandwich and enjoy yourself some Matlock. And basically the way my girl has interpreted that is, Okay, it's time for you to go sit in a corner somewhere, rot and die already. And I told her, I said, no, that's not what I mean. At least uh, I'm not being that harsh. I don't really mean it like that. But what I really mean is kick on back, enjoy the fruits of labor. Just enjoy the rest of your life quietly over here somewhere in the corner. And like for me with Jerry Lawler, I just go back to what happened when he had that heart attack and just how everybody was just coming to him, giving him nothing but love and support and all that. And it's like, forgive me, just forgive me because I've lived through it. I've seen a big bulk of Jerry Lawler's career growing up as a kid. For me, it's like, I don't really care if he's going to go the heel route. Nothing is going to ever equal to what he was doing on the Memphis territories, let me tell you, as far as being a bona fide heel goes. So all this talk about him being a heel commentator again and all that. Look, 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 look. When it's all said and done, I could really do without his lame ass jokes. I mean, God, I just I actually went and did something else. Until I knew he was done telling his jokes and they moved on to the next segment. Because Lord knows, there's only but so many times I can hear, Hey, there was a family of tomatoes that was walking down the street. You had a mama tomato, you had a papa tomato, you had a daughter tomato, and you had a son tomato. You know what the papa tomato said to his son tomato? He said, Hey son, catch up. I mean, seriously, I, I can only take but those kind of jokes for so freaking long, man. It's freaking ridiculous. Uh, let's go to the first match that had kicked off the Royal Rumble event. Uh, it was Dean Ambrose taking on Kevin Owens' last man standing match for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. I thought this was a fantastic way to kick off the actual Royal Rumble event. This was, without a doubt, one of my favorite matches of the entire card 
for the simple fact it was a last man standing match. And for me, uh, honestly, I haven't seen a really good last man standing match in quite some time, let alone for the WWE. And for me personally, I thought, well, you know, let me take that back. I kind of enjoyed what we had got from TNA Wrestling this week with the Matt Hardy EC3 last man standing match for the TNA title. I actually thought that was pretty good, especially the little swerve that they did at the end. But I really, really enjoyed Dean Ambrose, Kevin Owens. From just the moment that the bell had rang, these two guys, they could not wait to get their hands on one another. It was just an all-out Slugger Fest. I loved it. The fans in Orlando, though, they were so damn gullible, it wasn't even funny. I remember one of the first spots that we had saw during this match, it had involved Dean Ambrose being put through a wall barrier. It was like a really thick padded wall barrier that was over by JBL and crew. And you just had the crowd, just because it bent and it fell over, you had the fans go, holy shit, holy shit. And I'm thinking to myself, you guys are so gullible, like, nothing really hasn't even happened yet. Let's see something, like, actually go down. Well, a little bit later on during the match, there was a cool spot where Dean Ambrose had set up Kevin Owens laid out on a wooden announce, uh, not an announcer's table, but he set him up on a wooden table, went up to the top turnbuckle, did a elbow drop slash body splash. That kind of made the fans go, once again, holy, and you're like, okay, can we like really put like a book into this? Let's really give these guys a oh shit moment. And sure enough, there was a table or two that was set up kind of midway into the match. And you kind of had to have in the back of your mind, this is probably going to be the finish. Why blow a load on this spot right now? And it's kind of like, how are you going to top that later? It was basically two wooden tables stacked on top of each other. So you kind of had to have that in the back of your mind as you're watching these two guys go at it. And sure enough, the finale to this awesome last man standing match, uh, it had involved Kevin Owens, who had set up Dean Ambrose on top of some steel chairs. He was getting ready to do that backwards swanton flip bomb, if you will. And we had saw Dean Ambrose. He quickly came to hit Kevin Owens with the chair. And they kind of went back and forth a little bit. I remember Dean Ambrose actually ended up pushing Kevin off of that top turnbuckle. It sent Kevin flying and crashing into those two wooden tables. Dean Ambrose was pretty much able to retain his Intercontinental Championship that way. Fantastic match. I'm telling you guys, for those of you in particular that did not see tonight's WWE Royal Rumble events, I would encourage you all to go out of your way at all costs to try to check that match out when you get the opportunity. I want to take this time out to thank those of you that is checking out this edition of the RCWR show, your host right here, one and only Black Avenger, aka the Black Guys Rail, Lee Sanders. We are talking WWE Royal Rumble Fallout. Got a decent amount of you guys that's checking us out uh, live right now. I appreciate that. You know, we got the chat room that is active on Spreaker right now. So whether you're checking it out by uh, via laptop, desktop, Android ios whatever your respected device is plenty of ways for you to check us out feel free to holler interact all that good stuff and remember to follow me on twitter at the rcwr show facebook infinity one productions you know i know some of you guys you don't like it when we like blow our load and we go all like Not in order. I know there's a lot of you guys that like it when we go in order. So we're definitely going to do that for you guys. That's what we've been doing right now. Not that much more action to talk about. So let's continue to have at it. 
and blaze right through the rest of it. Special shout out to those of you that were affected by the snowstorm on the east coast, down in the southern parts or mid mid east, midwest, I should say. Uh, DMV definitely got hit really really hard over here and just my neck of the woods we had got about 28 inches of snow uh state of emergency i mean we were sidelined over here a lot of establishments were shut down uh, state of emergency i'm not sure what's going on with tomorrow but uh i can't stress it enough if you had got hit with snow if you haven't done so already you make sure that you look out for your neighbors make sure for the EMS, the fire department, and all that. Make sure you're able to clear those fire hydrants so that they have access to them very easily if an accident uh, were to occur and they need to access those fire hydrants like ASAP. I uh, can't stress that enough. All right, let's continue on and let's talk about some more action that came about from tonight's Royal Rumble event. Uh, we had saw New Day, Big E, Kofi Kingston, they defeated the Usos to retain their WWE Tag Team titles. Uh, fun, exciting matchup uh, right here. Uh, I know when we were offering predictions earlier in the week, there were some of you guys that felt as though the Usos should get the tag belts. But uh, again, I can't stress it enough, man. You got to go with what is drawing you money. And right now, love it. Or hate it. New Day is making the WWE money. Kofi Kingston with his... I love his show on YouTube. His Up, Up, Down, Down channel. Love that channel. Uh, great stuff. Check it out for all your gaming purposes. Uh, he does a phenomenal job uh, on there. The amount of attention that he's able to get. Uh, you combine that with what he's doing with the New Day. New Day, New Day is selling merchandise. Their merchandise is selling like hotcakes right about now. Uh, everywhere they go, I, I've never seen New Day cut a boring promo. It's always entertaining with these guys. Uh, Usos, Usos, y you know, look, if it wasn't for New Day, I have a theory. If it wasn't for New Day, I believe in my heart of hearts that Usos would probably be the tag team champions right about now. They probably would have been holding them for several months right about now. So I think the timing of New Day is very interesting. Can't think of the person that said it, but somebody thought it'd be a groovy idea if Jimmy and Jay Uso had went on single career paths. And I I don't think if you guys are kind of getting that vibe of like maybe it could go like a Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy type of route. I'm sorry, but just the way I'm kind of picking it up right now, the Uso brothers, they really need one another. They work better as a duo. That's the God's the honest truth. Um, great tag team matchup that we saw. Oh, we got introduced to uh, the new Francine, I think is the name of the trombone from uh Xavier Woods, he was playing it like a true heel, too. We had the Orlando crowd say to Xavier Woods, play Francine. And he's like, no, 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 no. I play when I want to play. And I'm not ready to play right now like a true heel. I like that. That guy, you know, he is years ahead of his time. Like a true heel, he knows just how to do it, let me tell you. Callisto, in a very interesting surprise, this one I got wrong. Callisto defeated Alberto Del Rio to become, for a second time, the United States champion. I am, like, very curious what happened the first go-round. I mean, we all remember when Callisto had defeated ADR for the United States title. That happened on Raw, right, guys? And then on later that week, SmackDown... ADR got the belt back. I'm just kind of curious, like, why it went down like that. And, like, I don't know if maybe Callisto had got, like, a concussion. People were maybe a little bit concerned. Or I never did hear why they put the belt on Callisto only to put it right back on ADR. For some reason, I thought 
it made all the sense in the world for ADR to come out of tonight's match against Callisto still holding on to the United States title. But uh, the powers that be had different plans. Uh, Callisto, uh, a.k.a. Rey Mysterio 2.0, continuing to come off on a, a very good note. Uh, I just, I'd like to get excited for this young man. He definitely has a very bright WWE career ahead of him. Uh, If you guys are looking for your Lucha Libre slash technical match of the night, this was the match right here. Uh, Good, strong, it was about over 10 minutes for sure of a match. Good, strong storytelling that they told uh, in regards to that matchup. I got to go with my second favorite match of the night. Charlotte taking on Becky Lynch for the Divas Championship, of which Charlotte retained her title. Uh, A lot of people were under the impression because WWE had Ric Flair say something along the lines of, hey, Charlotte's beat you twice already. Third time's going to be the charm. A lot of people were under the impression that Becky Lynch was going to get the belt but as I mentioned on the prediction special I didn't see it going down like that for the simple fact for me I'm really I I just kind of go with the gut instincts and my gut is saying okay Becky Lynch she's kind of getting that connection there with the fans and everything but she's not quite at that point I personally felt where it was time for them to pull the trigger. My whole deal was, okay, let's let's build it up a little bit more and maybe let's see if something can possibly happen uh, with regards to that, uh, you know, matchup, seeing those girls lock it up again. But, man, to see what had happened uh, post-match, Uh, was a very interesting tale uh, in itself as, oh, uh, with regards to the finish for Charlotte uh, versus Becky Lynch, great women's match too, by the way, that those two girls, I could just watch those girls all damn day, Charlotte and Becky Lynch, great rivalry that they had going on, great rivalry, just seems like it was intensifying over the past uh, several weeks, thoroughly thoroughly i was enjoying it uh we ended up seeing rick flair get to the top of the apron he threw his jacket in the face of becky lynch this distracted the referee uh charlotte she did something she didn't bust out a pair of brass knucks but she did some type of uh, a dirty move uh and then she went for a roll up i believe she did a dirty roll-up pin or whatever. It was a little bit confusing what had went down there, but she definitely had took advantage of her father throwing the coat in the face of Becky Lynch. But post-match is where things had really, really got interesting uh, as we had heard the music of one, Sasha Banks, who got in the face of Charlotte They stared each other down for a hot moment, and then we had saw Sasha Banks begin to attack uh, Becky Lynch, kicked her out of the ring and everything, and you're like, damn, that was pretty ice cold. Well, what's going on right here? Are we seeing a little bit of a reunion here with the BFFs? What's, What's going on here? And for just a hot couple of seconds, it looked like we had a reunion. But then, right as Charlotte was trying to help her dad exit the ring, we had saw Sasha attack Charlotte from behind, hit her with a backstabber, if you will, a little homage there. Every time I see that move done, I always think about Carlito. And then she followed it up by modifying it, turning it into the bank statement, Oh, every time I see my girl Sasha put that move on, I love it. I love it tremendously. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you guys something. If you guys are, uh, have never been hip on the Sasha Banks Charlotte feud from NXT, y'all missing now. I would highly encourage you guys now that some of you may have the WWE Network. I would highly encourage you all to binge on NXT matches involving those girls. 
those girls, man, they, they were tearing it up. They were tearing it up. For me, I'm proud to say that I was able to see pretty much the tail end of these girls run in NXT initially before they came on up the main roster. I got the opportunity to see them feud with one another over the NXT women's title. And I'm telling you guys, this is going to be one of the hottest rivalries. The timing of this is fucking awesome. I think this rivalry could go not only through WrestleMania, but I think it could go past WrestleMania. This is the feud that Charlotte needs so badly, I personally feel. I've been saying it for a couple of months now, ever since Ric Flair started being paired up with Charlotte. Ric Flair was never needed. Was she struggling? Yes, she was definitely struggling for a good series of months, and I think it's it was mainly because she was trying to be something that she wasn't. And as a result of that, the WWE fans, they're a pretty savvy bunch. They can usually tell when somebody's being genuine and when somebody's being fake. And when you're being fake, the WWE fans, they have their own unique way of being vocal about it. And the way that we were first introduced to Charlotte once she was a permanent fixture on the main WWE roster, it was like, okay, so they're trying to go this good baby face milky route. And it, it just felt so like, no, this isn't the Charlotte that that the fans should get. They should get the Charlotte that was in NXT. That's the one that they should get. They should get the nice throwback heel Charlotte. You know, even when she was flirting around with being a babyface and all that, she was doing a phenomenal job when she was down in NXT. But somewhere along the way, everything got lost in translation, you know. So it seemed like over time she started to get that confidence, that swagger back. And I also think that was the other thing, just trying to find her little niche on the roster, prove herself and everything. And once she got settled in, got comfortable, then we started seeing her character start to come out, and, you know, me personally, I don't care for this whole female carbon copy of a Ric Flair, she doesn't need it, so I can't wait to see where things go between her and Sasha Banks, I know fans have patiently been waiting for Sasha Banks to get her opportunity to step up to the plate and pretty much be, I think a lot of people want her to be the face for the Divas division. I'll go a step further than that. I think a lot of folks want for there to be a women's division with Sasha leading the way with the white flag. So, you know, for me personally, it's static. It's static that, you know, I'm telling you guys, for you newer folks, you did not get a chance to see Sasha Banks, Charlotte, get it on. And I'm telling you, just just on paper, it looks really good. But what's really going to be key is the the history being mentioned on main WWE programming of these girls and how they were going at it in NXT. They got to bridge that gap there for the newer fans and make them like why they should care. That way, it can have a nice domino effect on making these people that haven't begun to check out the NXT brand yet... To definitely make it be their business to check out the NXT brand going forward. But I'm excited. I can't wait for this to go down. Uh, again, Charlotte retained her Divas Championship. So, let's get to the meat and potatoes. This is it. It is time now to talk about the main event of the night. Which was the 30-man Royal Rumble match for... Roman Reigns, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So, Roman Reigns, of course, kicking things off as the number one entrant, as that was courtesy of the McMahons, if you will. Uh, number two, we had saw Rusev. Rusev came out. He was escorted to the ring by the Lovely and ravishing Lana. It was great to see her again. Uh, you know, I just had like... The way I was looking at this match, I said, Okay, so 
we're probably going to see all the League of Nation members and all the heels come out. They're probably going to try to get dabs on Roman Reigns. I'm just trying to think how they're probably going to book it. And if you checked out the RCWR show earlier in the week when I was offering Royal Rumble picks, I laid it out exceptionally how I felt this should have like gone down. I guess some people are still upset with Rusev and Lana for expressing their love and how they were still a couple. And as a matter of fact, they were getting married and all that because Roman Reigns made quick work out of Rusev. Tossed his ass out like a bag of potatoes. I mean, he just, Blake and Rusev was eliminated. Your number three entrant into the Royal Rumble match is where it really, really got interesting. And for those of you that are curious if I'm going to be going by the entrants in the order that they came out. No, 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 no. I only want to talk about key entries into this Royal Rumble match while I'm talking about the match itself. Number three was a very interesting tale in itself. We heard the rumors. Oh. But for it to actually go down, I never thought I'd see it. But we had the phenomenal one, AJ Styles, make his WWE debut. And what a fantastic way to make his WWE debut by participating in the Royal Rumble match itself. 38-year-old AJ Styles, who has held numerous Numerous titles amongst many wrestling organizations. Multi-time uh, in uh, New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling Champion. Uh, member of the Bullet Club. Multi-time uh, NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Multiple-time TNA World Heavyweight Champion. The uh, Naro TNA X Division Champion. Six-time X Division Champion. Uh, ROH World Tag Team Champion, uh, shoot, man, the man has just done it all. I mean, he has been everywhere, and he's done that. Uh, the man's career, it just really speaks for itself. Long, illustrious career. I've been a fan of AJ Styles for many, many years. Uh, I pretty much caught a big bulk of his career in TNA Wrestling, and there would be times over the years I would say, man, when is this guy going to come on over to the WWE? He needs to stop faking already. It's time for him to get that big payday. It's time for him to really jump out there, get that brass ring. Let's do this already. And I, I tell you, he fit in there so perfectly well. I put out a very interesting tweet when I saw him make his debut tonight. I said, you know, over the years, we have seen a decent amount of TNA wrestlers come on over, try to do a little something, something in the WWE, but none, none had received the amount of a great reception as AJ Styles had got tonight. You know, I was a little, I was a little bit concerned, and it was so interesting the way that it all had came down too, because we had saw the countdown clock, and then they just panned in on Roman Reigns' face, and he's like looking at the Titan, trying, trying to figure out who it was that was coming out. You hear the music, and the fans, they're kind of like, you know, and if you're watching it on the TV, you're kind of like, okay, the music sounds kind of good, but like who, who, and then you just see him come out. From the gorilla position or whatever, he comes on now. He's got the hoodie on. You're like, can it be? He takes the hoodie off, and you're like, it is. It is AJ Styles. And I, I tell you, I was watching this, and me and my girl, we just was like, you know what? This is a welcome breath of fresh air. And I'm going to tell you why it's a welcome breath of fresh air. I know we're going to have some people that's going to look at this and they're going to use it as an opportunity to shit 
on the WWE because they're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's great. You sign AJ Styles. Yeah, you got another late middle age, 40 year old man almost coming to the main WWE roster. You know, what, what, what the hell, you know, what good is this? How does this really help? I, I, I trust me. I know there's going to be people that's going to talk like this. Okay. Let me tell you something. Let's be brutally honest with each other. The WWE product, as far as main star caliber talent goes right now, they have been suffering. They do not have Cesaro. They do not have Randy Orton. They do not have John Cena. They don't have Daniel Bryan. Lord knows if Daniel Bryan is... We don't even know if he's going to come back. Spoiler alert, he didn't show up at the Rumble tonight. I, I gave a bold prediction that Daniel Bryan would be returning. I, I guess WWE wasn't quite ready to blow their entire load out there just yet. I still feel that maybe like night after WrestleMania is maybe we'll get Daniel Bryan back. Who knows? But WWE is hurting for serious superstar talent on the main roster right now. And I know some people, they may be like, well, what about AJ Styles in in NXT and all that? And quite honestly, NXT is fine where it is right now. The main roster is what really needs all the help that it can get. So for me, I thought this was a very interesting tale in itself to have AJ Styles debut pretty much with the main roster and pretty much... He's debuting uh, at the Royal Rumble. I I thought it was a great way to really see, okay, just how much of a reaction is this man going to get. I'm sure they were paying attention to this uh, very closely, the guys in the back. And I promise you, I think that this was a telling tale that, for me, solidifies that AJ Styles, he's definitely going to have a place on the main Roster. I would be shocked if they sent AJ to NXT. I don't, I think NXT is fine. It's fine. I've been watching the product the past several weeks. It's fine right now. We don't need AJ over there. Put him on the main roster where he could do the most good. To the point, we were talking about like all the different combinations of matches we could see of AJ Styles on the main roster. I mean, just to put it out there, I mean, just look at this. Just one man alone and the fresh matchups that you get. AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler. AJ Styles, Neville. AJ Styles, Kevin Owens. AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose. AJ Styles, Alberto Del Rio. AJ Styles, Chris Jericho, whenever you decide you maybe want to Bring him in. Let him do a little something, something. AJ Styles, Cesaro, when he comes back. AJ Styles, Tyson Kidd, if he ever gets it all together and he comes back. My God. AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, that is if Daniel Bryan is given the green light to come back. AJ Styles, Kofi Kingston. The combinations, my God. Guys, you got to admit, it is endless. My girl even said, you know, they could go there. It might be a one-sided type of match, but if you do it right and the circumstances are, you know, just right storyline-wise, you could even do AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar. And I was kind of like, maybe, maybe you could kind of go there, maybe. So, great debut for the guy. I know somewhere there is TNA president Dixie Carter once again sitting on her bed while her husband is asleep. And when she saw this great debut, she probably was crying, had her Kleenex in one hand, bonbons in another, saying, why, AJ, why? (laughs) Why, AJ, why? And I could just picture her husband, I think her husband's name is Seth or whatever, I could just picture him rolling over and saying, hun, Stop watching them already. You're only going to get yourself more worked up. Is it the go to girls on? And I could just see Dixie just changing the channel. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. 
do, do, do. And if you threw a party and you invited everyone you knew, you would see the biggest gift you get from me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being a friend. I know, I know, I know that song way too well. Hey, enough about that. That's another story. All right, so AJ Styles, we were talking about him. Some other things uh, that was pretty interesting. Uh, honestly, I'm trying to pull up the key points here because I, I had to write this down here. Or not write it down, but type it up here. Uh, so we told you about AJ Styles. Y2J came in at number six. He would actually end up being the one to have the longest time in the Rumble. He went about 50 minutes plus. Uh, I thought that was a a very silly move because I'll tell you the reason why. I love Chris Jericho. I've been a fan of his for many, many years. But Jericho, he has that track record. He comes and he goes. I thought that honestly, that spot of being involved in the Rumble match for that length of time, I felt it should have gone to AJ Styles, because AJ Styles, unfortunately, I mean, he was in there for a a decent amount of time, Uh, he was in there right on up through until Kevin Owens came in, Kevin Owens came in at number 18, and he was the one that eliminated AJ Styles, it was hilarious the way it went about too, because right when Owens was getting ready to toss AJ over the rope, send his ass packing, and to the back, Owen says to AJ, welcome to the WWE, and he just flew his ass out there. But no, like, I thought, once I saw AJ go out, I'm like, okay, so like, what the hell? Like, what, what? And to just, in retrospect, see that old man Jericho was in there for 50 minutes, I really felt it would have been worthwhile to have AJ Stabbs be the one to be in that spot. You know, I mean, but I got to crap on WWE for one thing. Going back to AJ Styles one more time. Did anybody else notice the lack of commentating there was in getting AJ Styles over? I mean, there really wasn't that much that they were able to say about AJ Styles. I'm curious how the French color commentators and the Spanish color commentators had addressed AJ Styles if they mentioned his affiliation Uh, with ROH and uh, TNA and all that because listening to Cole in the game try to talk about AJ Styles it was just like it was very weak it was very watered down there wasn't even really that much enthusiasm there really wasn't that much excitement you know what I'm saying like I wish we could have just rewinded that back (laughs) And, like, I wish it would have been, like, three, two, one. And then when you see the music, you know, I just wish it would have been, oh, my God, do you guys know who that is? That's the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. This is a journeyman of professional wrestling. This man has been in territories such as Ring of Honor. He's been involved in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's the leader of the Bullet Club. What the hell is AJ Styles doing here in the WWE? I really wish that they would have gone that route of excitement and really try to do a good job in bridging the gap and talk about how he is one of the most bona fide, hottest free agents that's out there on the market. And I really wish they would have done a better job in hyping it up. But I I don't know. Maybe I'm kind of wrong with my assessment there. I'd love to hear from you guys, but I really don't feel that the commentating team, and I know they take their orders from the monkeys in the back, but I really felt that it was just kind of a a weak weak job in putting him over. But we mentioned AJ Styles was eliminated by Kevin Owens when Owens came in at number uh, 18. R-Truth, he came in at number 12. That was pretty freaking hilarious. We saw R-Truth come out, and he was trying to set up a steel ladder. He thought that it was like, a, I guess, a Money in the Bank ladder match or or something. <laughs> it was hilarious. Came, basically pulled him off the ladder, sent him flying over the ring to eliminate him. That was pretty much for him. As expected, Strowman... 
Braun Strowman, he had a pretty good performance. He eliminated Kane. Uh, Big Show. I love the 1992 reference of Big John Stud by JBL there. Exactly how he reminded me. Brock Lesnar was number 23. This was his second time being involved in a Royal Rumble match. It was his first since the 2003 Royal Rumble, believe it or not. He cleaned house. He did pretty damn good. All the Wyatt members up to that point, uh, they were in there. But once Lesnar got in there, he pretty much uh, made some quick work uh, out of all of them. See, Sami Zayn, he came in at number 20. And this was a missed opportunity right here uh, for WWE because what what made headlines, I think about, if not over the weekend, last weekend, there was a WWE NXT event that had went down. And apparently at the live event, Kevin Owens had showed up and he got in the face of Sami Zayn. I kind of wish that the WWE team of writers, they would have somehow been able to kind of slide that in there and all that. But it is what it is. But it was nice seeing Sami Zayn. Uh, he got a great pop uh, from the crowd as he took the fight to Owens. He actually eliminated Owens. Uh, Bray Wyatt, once he came out by this point, Bray Wyatt was number 27. The other members of the Wyatt family, they had already been eliminated. But once Bray Wyatt came out, you know, him, Lesnar, they got a thing going on. Uh, We actually saw Bray Wyatt. He signaled for the rest of the Wyatt family to gang up on Lesnar. Uh, We saw a little bit of controversy go down because we had saw the Wyatt family assault Lesnar. Bray Wyatt, he did the sister Abigail, and he's like, okay, send him out. Get him out of here. And we actually saw the Wyatt family members, who had already been eliminated, send Lesnar over the ropes. He touches the floor. Lesnar's eliminated. Uh, Shout out to my boy uh, Anthony Missionary from Wrestling Soup. And uh, Don Tony, I was like, can you guys explain to me, like, how is this legit? Because... Lesnar was eliminated by four guys that had already been eliminated. And their best explanation was, honestly, don't matter. You eliminated, you're eliminated. That's just how it goes. And it was kind of like, huh, uh, okay. So I, I know some of you guys probably was like, wait a minute, like scratching your head on that one as well. Uh, it, it was what it was with regards to that one. Uh, let's see, but what was the most interesting tale in itself was shortly after all that craziness had went down, Roman Reigns had came back. Now, we got to rewind it back just a little bit. Somewhere in all of this craziness, we had saw League of Nationalities led by Vince McMahon come out, and they actually had pulled Roman Reigns from under the third rope, so he wasn't officially eliminated. We saw him be pulled out. They did a quick beatdown on him. They sent him over to the announcer's table. Rusev did a big body splash on Roman. That was pretty much it for Roman. He went to the back. He was able to walk out on his own accord with EMTs and officials to the back. We thought maybe that was going to be the last time we had saw Roman Reigns. But no, he came back, made a... Nice, strong, thunderous comeback. At this point, you're kind of wondering to yourself, well, what the hell? Who the hell is going to be number 30? We polled you guys last week. I brought it up on the show earlier this week. Told you what I would do if I was doing it. I've said this for a couple of weeks now, and it actually went down. Your number 30 entrant. And this year's Royal Rumble. And your only other surprise other than AJ Styles was the return of the game, Triple H. And as soon as you saw that go down, you just like, okay, so we got a little bit of unfinished business here. What the hell is going to be going on? What's up right here? And it was great seeing Roman Reigns, Triple H. I'm telling you, the pop that Triple H had got when he came out. One of those rare moments that, like, fans in unison were excited to see Triple H. So he comes out, great little stare down that we had got right there. And uh, it was nice seeing Triple H and all the craziness that was going on. We saw Triple H interact with Dolph Ziggler. Poor Dolph Ziggler. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's all I got to say. Dolph Ziggler got a pedigree. Dolph Ziggler got eliminated by Triple H eventually and all that. I was like, damn, poor, poor. You look twice. You might have thought it was Shawn Michaels. But no, uh, Dolph Ziggler, great little interaction he had with him. Nice little interaction with Bray Wyatt. Triple H is like, hey, look, take out Roman Reigns and we'll do our thing later. Bray Wyatt wasn't having it. He used it as his opportunity to take it to the game. Hey, come on. That's good bragging rights right there. Not every day you can say you eliminated Triple H, right? But, uh, you know, eventually, uh, I can't remember. You know what? Let's pull it up here. I think Bray Wyatt. Let's see how it went down here. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt was eliminated by Triple H and Sheamus. Yeah, because long after, I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to think here. Yeah, Triple H and Sheamus, they have formed uh, a alliance because Sheamus had came in at number 29. So he pretty much had uh, Triple H's back until Roman Reigns had eliminated Sheamus. It pretty much had came down in the end, your final three. It was Triple H, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns. And there was a critical moment where Dean Ambrose was out and about And it was Triple H, Roman Reigns. It was looking as though Roman Reigns was possibly going to eliminate Triple H. But man, when the tides had turned, we had saw Triple H. He just laid it into Roman Reigns, sent his ass flying. I don't recall if there was a pedigree in there. But I do remember when Roman Reigns went flying out. And they showed it like three times. Roman Reigns got eliminated, and we saw Triple H in euphoria just giving him the DX crotch chop. And the fans were in freaking unison of a huge pop. I mean, that was just a telling tale in itself right there. Just the excitement. I, I got to be brutally honest. You know, I thought the Roman Empire was going very well. But to see... How the fans reacted to Triple H. It was like whoa. In the end it was down to Dean Ambrose. Triple H. A lot of folks were under the impression. That maybe Dean Ambrose was going to get it. Come on you you guys should know better than that. Uh, It's all said and done. Let's stop beating around the bush. Your 2016. Royal Rumble winner. And the new. WWE World Heavyweight Champion for the 14th time in his illustrious career, the game Triple H. Mm. Fellow on black days it has for the WWE as the authority is the top dog right now. So let's really dissect this a little bit. Triple H gets the belt back. And you can't help but kind of go, okay, so like, what was the whole point in Roman Reigns being put in all these weird predicaments that he was put in? If at the very end, you were going to have Triple H become the WWE champion. Honestly, and this may annoy some people, I think what it all comes down to for the WWE at this point is, is trying to do what they can to make the last two pay-per-views leading up, or correction, to make the Fastlane pay-per-view and the WrestleMania pay-per-view event that much more, what's the right word I'm looking for? Sizzling. Because as it stands right now to just have, I mean, let's be honest, I don't really think a lot of people would buy into the whole Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar 2 for the title at WrestleMania. Me personally, I would love to see that match happen because I feel in my heart of hearts, Roman Reigns has improved tremendously since last year's Royal Rumble. I think they would be able to outdo what they did at last year's WrestleMania. But I think this is really all about what is going to be the ultimate draw And I think for the weeks leading up from now until Mania, I think it's going to be the writers, everybody involved is going to do what they can to properly get the Roman Empire over. Because based, honestly, look at the reactions that we had got from the Orlando crowd tonight. Roman isn't 
Because honestly, there should have been boos and all that for Triple H. I didn't hear not one damn boo for Triple H. That was a very, very interesting tale in itself. I don't know if maybe the fans are looking at Triple H and they're thinking of him like NXT Triple H. Or if they just could not stand Roman Reigns and it was pretty much just anyone but Roman is their whole mentality. Uh, but this is going to be a very interesting telling. So I'm very curious what you guys thought of that outcome with Triple H now being the top dog. You know, a lot of my colleagues were under the impression that there was no way in hell that Roman Reigns was going to lose the belt. And the fact that everybody was going, it's going to be this person, it's going to be that person. It made some people feel as though even more the reason why Roman was going to retain. But I made a very good, strong argument when I was saying why Roman doesn't need to go over, which is basically the mentality I had was you can't have Roman Reigns basically come out on top of 29 other superstars and he came in at number one. That just says a lot about the roster and all that. That just, There's no way he's better than the entire roster. So you had to put some type of a monkey wrench in there, whether it was Brock Lesnar, Triple H, or somebody new. You had to put some type of a new element in there to dethrone Roman Reigns. But I'm very curious what you all uh, had thought about the circumstances for that. If you agree with it, if you think... The payoff for Roman will be even sweeter and better uh, when it comes time for WrestleMania and he gets a handoff that way. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot of you guys that's going to be very upset at this. A lot of you guys are going to be like, oh, there's Triple H. You know, he's I, honestly, I think you got to look at it from also this standpoint as well. Even though WWE Raw, the flagship show, even though it is doing better numbers. It's not like significantly better. The numbers are still somewhat on a steady decline. It's only saw a little bit of a slight jump by like 7% here, 5% there, 3% here. Honestly, I feel this is really done to try to help put a lot of attention on the main flagship shows, not to mention you got SmackDown now on the USA Network. So I, I just think when you add it all up and then just thinking about the WrestleMania buy rates, you know, you having those names, those marquee names in certain spots and all that. I just think the whole big domino effect ultimately is just trying to set up a really fantastic and memorable uh, Royal Rumble a correction, uh, WrestleMania event is uh, the impression that I'm getting there. But, you know, honestly, I got to say with tonight's Royal Rumble event, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, very solid. Uh, no complaints over here, uh, except for the way that things had went down with AJ Styles. I definitely wish he would have been in there a lot longer instead of old man Jericho. No disrespect to old man Jericho, but hey, it is what it is. So, I'm seeing some of the comments that's coming in from you guys via the speaker chat. Uh, those of you that want to grab my attention, you can still interact with me that way. Hit me up on Twitter as well, at the RCWR Show. Uh, just a heads up, there will be an all-new RCWR Show coming at you this Tuesday night of January 26, 10 p.m. Eastern, live on Spreaker. Dot com. Make sure you check it out. If you can't join us live, we will have the episode be available on demand on great listening platforms. All the links you need is actually in this episode description. So check it out when you guys get a chance. Uh, we skipped it last month, but also uh, Saturday, January 30th. Mark that down. Marks the return of 30 with Lee. So make sure you check that out. I'm uh, not really sure how we're going to go about that one. I really want to talk about what's been going on with the Oscar boycott. I think I might also slide in uh, a movie review in there uh, as well. But mark those two dates down. Again, all new RCWR show Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, January 26th on Spreaker.com. And then on January 30th, you'll be able to catch an all new on-demand episode of 30 with Lee. 
All right, get to some of you guys interactions so let's go to Spreaker there's a decent amount of comments here shout out to Kingsley shout out to Brendan Kingsley one of the better rumble so happy AJ Styles is here yeah definitely uh, Kingsley had said he checked out the Royal Rumble event live tonight on the Xbox 360. He didn't experience any lag issues whatsoever. Brendan was pushing his tablet. He didn't notice any lagging issues as well. Kingsley, who do I think got the biggest pop? AJ, Sasha, Brock, Triple H. It's a toss-up. I, I, I think it's a tie between... I think it's a tie between AJ, Sasha, and Triple H. I got to give the edge more to... Ooh, that's a tough one. I got to give the edge more to Triple H with Sasha coming in at number two, AJ coming in uh, at number three. Let's go to Twitter here. Twitter, shout out to Leanne. Let's see. Always like it when we get the retweets there. I like that. Shout out to... As a matter of fact, when I was talking about the retweets and all that, shout out to uh, everybody that I was interacting with on Twitter tonight. I mainly kind of took it easy tonight. I just wanted to kick back and just really watch the event. I really wasn't uh, chatty like that tonight on uh, Twitter. I usually am, but this was one of those Royal Rumbles. I just wanted to kick back and enjoy it, and they delivered. I thoroughly enjoyed this better than last year's Royal Rumble event. Shout out to Nikki. Shout out to Ryan. Uh, shout out to Solo. Shout out to Mr. Unpredictable. Let's see. We picked up a couple of new followers, too. Shout out to some of you guys. So I know we're going to upload this to YouTube. Again, uh, YouTube, you guys that's going to be checking this out on YouTube. I definitely want to hear from you guys. What was your high points, your low points for this event? I definitely uh, am very curious how you all have perceived uh, the pay-per-view event. So make sure you interact and leave those comments and all that. And to you, you out there who may be checking this out for the very first time, you're new, welcome. Love to have you subscribe so you never miss out on all the great content we do for you here on a weekly basis. However you're checking this out, if you're not subscribed, do subscribe. Word of mouth means a lot. Spread the word. Leave those ratings. Leave those reviews. You could do so on Stitcher and or on iTunes, but once again, Royal Rumble tonight, it definitely gets a pass, highly recommend, if you haven't checked it out already, check it out, sign up for a free access to WWE Network this month and all that, however you gotta do it, check it out, do what you gotta do, alright guys, that is gonna do it, I'll see you this Tuesday night for an all new RCWR show, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at the RCWR show, Facebook, Infinity One Productions, that's with an E, Spell out one, Infinity One Productions. That's going to do it. A very good night. Good morning. Take care.